Hi guys, as we've got uh, the T84 apart today, I thought what we could look at then is exactly how it works, or could try and explain how it works in hopefully fairly simple terms, because my understanding unfortunately is pretty simple as well. There are loads of guys on YouTube who've got videos about uh, gearboxes and exactly how they work, so if you want some in-depth information you can look at those, but um, just for us to understand what we've got in our Jeep and what's actually going on in there, I'll try and keep it simple as much as possible. Um, so it's actually fairly simple what's going on inside a T84. If we imagine uh, this is our gearbox here, this is the top, this is the bottom here. When you look at it from above you can see these components looking down and then hidden away at the bottom is this one here. This is a cluster gear which sits in the bottom with a big shaft going through it. Okay, And what we've got, this is the front and this is the rear here. The front is the input shaft which is driven from your engine and via the clutch so you can disengage this shaft from the engine by doing uh, putting the clutch, uh, releasing or engaging the clutch as you can see this shaft here drives this gear all the time they're connected there so there's nothing you can do, you can, can't disconnect this gear, it's constantly connected what we can also see though is that there's an output shaft here there's a different shaft and it's not connected to this one at the moment they're totally separate, you can rotate this one and this one doesn't remove, uh, excuse me, doesn't move this is the output shaft, it goes through to the back, connects to a big gear in your transfer case and then sends the power out to your wheels. Okay, So this is all constantly, unless you have the transfer box in neutral, this is constantly driven by the wheels. Okay, So if you're moving forwards this is, and you're not in neutral in the transfer case, this is always going to be rotating. If you're stationary, it's going to be stationary, so that's how it works. Okay. And here's one up here, this is a, this is a, a reproduction uh, rubbish one which is all rusted, which I was going to use but it's no use. So yeah, two shafts, input, output, drives the, re drives the wheels, comes from, takes power from the engine. Now if we come back to this gear here, we can see that if the clutch is um, engaged, this gear will be drive driven by the speed of the engine and it is constantly in sync, or it's, uh, excuse me, it's constantly meshed with this gear here on this cluster gear, okay? So if the engine's rotating and the clutch allows it to, this gear here will always drive this cluster gear here, so the cluster gear will always be rotating with it, like this. And look, what we can see as well is that this gear is also rotating as well, so if this one's being driven, it's driving this, which is also driving this. But if we look, we can see that this output shaft is not rotating. Okay, Even though it's been driven, it's not rotating. And that's what we'll come to in a, in a second. So this is the, the mesh portion of the synchro mesh for this area. This is third gear. This is second gear. Okay, So you can see that always rotates. But at the moment, it's not putting anything out to the wheels. So the vehicle is not moving. So this is when your gearbox is in neutral. When it's in neutral, the engine's rotating and it's driving this cluster gear and it's driving that second gear. That is neutral there, okay? So that's that portion which we'll come back to in a sec. We'll look at the synchronizer unit of it. What we'll look at is the easy one, which is first gear. So here is first gear. These are helical cut gears. This is straight cut gear on here. Straight cut gear can transfer a lot of power. Um, it's very efficient, but because of the way that the gears mesh with each other, it's uh, very noisy as well. So we don't use that for the higher speed gears, we use it down low when we want a lot of power to transmit that a grunt and that's what these can do. But they do make that characteristic whine which is why your reverse gear in your car sounds weird and why uh, first gear in a Jeep sounds strange, it's because of these big straight cut gears. Now when the box is in neutral, again, so the gearbox is in neutral, this gear here is splined and it sits on this output shaft. So it would be a bit forward there, but um, this gear here is locked to this shaft, so if this shaft rotates, if your wheels rotate, first gear always rotates, okay? So, we're in neutral, this, this portion here is rotating from the engine, but this is not rotating, okay? So if we want to put it in gear then, we put the clutch in, it disconnects the nose gear from the engine, but this still remains spinning because it's got inertia, so this whole mass is still rotating, okay? So even though it's not connected to the engine anymore, this is heavy, it's all still rotating. So if we then try and engage first gear by sliding this across, 
This is stationary because your wheels aren't sta uh, your wheels aren't moving, but this is still rotating. So all it does is mashes together. It goes and it mashes, and that's the grinding. So that's why when you're stationary and you want to put first gear in, when you put the clutch in. You need to give it a couple of seconds and then gently feed in first gear rather than just putting the clutch in and then just smacking it in because all that will happen is the stationary gear here will clash with the rotating uh, assembly here. So you need to do that. Likewise, this is why if the vehicle's moving, if the vehicle's moving, what's happening, we've said that the wheels are rotating, always, this is always being driven, so this is rotating now. We put the clutch in, this is going slower than the wheels, so if we try to put it together, all it does is mash again, it clashes, which is why with first gear you have to come to a complete stop before you can put engage first gear, okay? Otherwise it just clashes. So that's why there's no synchronizer on this. The speeds of the speed of this gear has to match this gear for them to engage. And if they're not for any reason, say the back the the wheels are rotating and this is rotating, we're not stationary, it will clash. Okay? So that's why you get a lot of damage on these and you can see a hell of a lot of damage in the engagement of the gear, okay? So that is uh, non-synchronized gear. The reverse is exactly the same. It's driven off this little guy here, which is the counter gear, which uh, rotates in the opposite direction so that all that happens with this is in neutral again, first, neutral, put it in reverse, slide it across, it engages, and it rotates in the opposite direction to turn your wheels in the reverse direction. So that's reverse, it just drives off this little gear here. But again, with reverse, if we're moving, they can clash and you can get damage on the teeth here. So you have to be stationary again for reverse. So that's first and reverse, very straightforward. The gear is what moves, okay? And that's why you have to be stationary. There's no synchronization. So next we come to second and third, okay? And synchronization. Now, third gear is pretty straightforward then. Third gear, all it does is we lock so we said these two move separately, don't they? Input and output are not attached. But third gear, all we do is we slide this across and this locks this shaft, the input shaft, to the output shaft. So one rotation of the engine equals one rotation of the output shaft. So that's all it is. So the power comes straight through like this. It doesn't bother with the cluster gear. Although it's rotating, the power transmission is directly across. One engine rotation equals one rotation of the output shaft there. But how's it actually doing that then? Well, we've got a thing called a synchronizer really, which is quite clever. And this is the issue that I've had with mine and lots of issues have. The synchronizer starts to get worn and what have you. Um, and synchronizers allow you to change gears smoothly without clashing gears. But as we've said, these, it's a synchro mesh. These gears, we're not moving a gear anymore, are we? We're not engaging a gear by moving into another gear. The gears are already engaged. What we're doing is we're locking gears to shafts instead, or locking shafts together. So we're not smashing gears together now. So what we've got then, is we've got a, a cone here, and we've got a uh, blocking ring. These have got different names, synchro rings, blocking rings, whatever. We've got a ring, okay? And they've got a, a face on the inside and a face here. And just through friction, just like another clutch, if we push this in, it grabs, now this is the worn one, this is the one that I had which can't actually do it, so let's get the, uh, yeah, let's get the non-worn one, it, it grabs and locks it, okay? So all that happens then is if we want to engage third gear, we have locked to, uh, can I do it? Yes, here we go. Locked to the output shaft is this hub here, so it sits on the output shaft, Right, can't actually get this to go on because there's uh, cosmoline still in here and everything, so um, we can do it like this though. So we can see this is the hub, the hub has splines and it is locked to the output shaft here. It sits, yeah, it sits there, you can see this is where it would be normally. It sits, this should sit here, and so if this output shaft turns one rotation, this turns one rotation as well. Okay, and on the outside of this we have this sleeve, okay, with splines cut into it again, and the sleeve fits happily on here like that, and one rotation equals one rotation, okay? So, um, if we want to get it into third gear then, so let's have a look, it's sitting like this, 
So this is just here. We've got a ring here with our cone in it, and we know if we push the cone in, it locks and grabs this gear, okay? So let's do the one which actually works. Let's put him on. So we're in neutral then. This is turning independently. Look, it's all trying to rotate it. Let's remove this down a bit. This is turning independently of this shaft here, okay? And then we want to engage third gear. We have the shifter fork grabs in here, which is controlled by our shifter cane. So when we select third, it moves from neutral and it pushes, you see the blocking ring moving in there, it pushes the blocking ring because of the way we have on here, we've got little teeth and they live, uh, yep, there we go, they live within the, the little area there, so it grabs it, pushes it, and now it will drive it towards this here, so rotating, grabbed its blocking ring, it's pushing, the friction's increasing, those align, so you can see that the dogs on here are now aligned with the dogs on here, and then let's see if it actually, ta-da, it's moved across, and now because this is now, look, locked to this shaft, and now this is locked to those dogs under here, this shaft is now one complete unit. So now this is third gear here. If you imagine it's, t it's turning this as well, of course. But that's third gear there. And if we knock it into neutral, it disengages. This is no longer locking here. Disengages and it turns freely. So that's how it works there. And the synchronizer portion of it is the action of this blocking ring grabbing this cone and aligning the teeth. So they're moving independently, grabs it, aligns it, and then slides across, okay? That's the synchro, synchronizer portion of it. Now the problems come is when the ring inside here is worn, and what it can't do is it can't grab that cone properly, which is what we've already seen. So that one works, this blocking ring is not worn, it works, but this one is, and it twists and twists and twists, and no matter how much force you put on it, it will never catch these teeth and it will never synchronize the speed of them and that's why your synchro doesn't work and it grinds because this when it's grinding we've removed the blocking ring it's smashing like this clack 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 that is the grinding there it will never lock so that's the issue you have with worn blocking rings so that was third gear there so let's go to second gear second gear is just the same, well, it's not just the same, but it's similar. So remember, this second gear is free to move on the shaft, isn't it? So all this one does is it locks. This time we're locking the output shaft to the third gear but through this hub here. So this time then, so we're in neutral, freely rotating, and then what we're gonna do is, blocking rings, coming. it's coming across, the sleeve is coming across, it's grabbed the blocking ring, let's get you to a line. There you go, and clunks in, and now we've locked, via the sleeve, we've locked the output to the, uh, we've locked the output through the hub, through the sleeve, and now the second gear is locked to this shaft, so any rotation of this shaft, look, is now rotating through second gear, so they're meshed together, and now instead of freely rotating, it's actually driving it again. So that is second gear, and then back into neutral. Yeah, if I can do it. There we go, and back into neutral, and look, now rotates and doesn't do it. So let's do it again. Grab, starting to firm up. Tunk. That's it, that's second gear then. Locking this gear to this shaft, it's that simple. So, as I said, the issues are, there can be all sorts of issues with a synchro, but they're mainly due to the worn cone here, not having the friction to grab and speed up and accelerate and match the, the speed of the components. So that's a synchronizer portion of it there, guys. Right, guys. Just one last thing I wanted to talk about was double declutching exactly what it is. Um, I was double declutching with the Jeep from uh, third into second because of the worn synchronizer on second gear, the worn synchronizer here, this cone was worn, okay? So you can baby a transmission which has a bad synchronizer by double declutching to go from 
third down into second, okay? So let's have a look then, what have we got? Let's move the cluster gear out of the way. This is third gears engaged, remember, so input shaft is locked directly to output shaft. When they rotate, they rotate together. Now, we'll say we're going 45 miles an hour, the wheels are turning really quickly, the engine is turning really quickly, we're slowing down, okay, we're slowing down, the engine's starting to uh, slow down as well. So, we get to around about, I don't know, let's say we're going down to like 30, and we want to drop down into second gear, okay? So what we do is we put the clutch in, and then put the clutch in, and then we shift into neutral. There we go, clunk. Input shaft and engine are now disconnected from output shaft. So look, turning the input shaft, nothing happening. But the output shaft, remember, is being driven by, it, by the rear wheels. So it's still turning really, really fast, okay? So even though the engine we've now disconnected, it's turning really, really fast, okay? So we drop the clutch in, We've shifted into neutral. Now what we do though, is we now let the clutch out again. So we're in neutral, we let the clutch out again, which means the engine power is reconnected to the input shaft, reconnected through here, through here, through here, and through here to our second gear. And remember our second gear is freewheeling, even though the output shaft is turning really fast with the, with the rear wheels, remember that our second gear can turn freely on its own and it's connected to the cluster gear all the time. So the engine power is going through like this and driving this. So what we do is if we then blip the throttle, we can suddenly speed this gear up, we can suddenly speed up the cluster gear and we can speed up second gear as well. So we spin them up really high. So we go vroom and we spin everything up really, really high. And what that does is it takes some of the load and some of the work that the um, uh, the blocking ring would have to do, the synchro ring would have to do, to match the very different speed between the engine speed and the output shaft, and the, therefore the wheel speed, uh, just by blipping the throttle and putting that power through there. So that's what we've done. So we've blipped the throttle, spun up, second, spun up the cluster gear, spun up second gear, the speed of second gear now, freewheeling on this shaft, is closer, starting to match the shaft here, so if then we put the clutch in again, and then we can then slide the synchro across, and we can engage second gear really easily. So all it does is it matches the speed of the second gear and the shaft together, so it, it makes it much easier. The synchro has to do much less work. So again, we're in third gear, let's remember we're in third gear, clutch in, neutral, clutch out, blip the throttle, speeds everything up, clutch in again, down into second, clutch out, power on, and away we go. So that's how you do double declutching, and that's what's going on. Hopefully that's fairly simple to understand, that's what's going on in the gearbox there, and that's how you baby the synchro when it's worn from going from third to second there. Because really the synchro is doing far less work, because you're actually matching, instead of using a synchro to match the speeds of the shafts and the gears, you're just using uh, blipping the throttle and powering it up yourself, and that's what you do there. And it works really well. And you can do uh, double declutching with gearboxes which don't even have a synchro in them, so you match the speeds. You know we said if one is stationary and the other's rotating and they just grind together. Well, if you match them yourselves, if you blip the throttle and match the gears yourselves, you don't get the grinding. So that's double declutching, and it's very useful. Right, guys, hopefully that explains a little bit about exactly what's going on in the T84. Um, and is fairly clear. If it's not clear, let me know in the comments and uh, we'll try and explain it some more. Um, hopefully that will give you just a bit of better understanding about what's going on. Again, I didn't go into full detail about the synchro and the dogs and everything like that, but it's just to give you an overview of how the gearbox is transmitting power through it and what's going on. So uh, yeah, thanks a lot for that guys. Like and subscribe and we'll keep the videos coming. We'll keep on working on this transmission and get it uh, sorted, hopefully, shortly.